was difficult, what was challenging. Anyone? Is a consistent funnel if you can speak up. Okay, uh, I know uh, communicating with large language models are uh, a bit difficult. Uh, managing the communication is also difficult. So, spawned uh, you are experiencing that. Uh, if anyone else can say something. Okay, should we wait for a little bit for some people to join? Until then, anyone? I'm going to call out names. Then, Ikram, can you share your experience with prompt engineering? What was difficult? What challenge did you? Encounter. Ikram, can you hear me or can you write? So let's move on to ADS. ADS, say something. You guys are not talking. Hello. Hi, ADS. Uh, from la from the challenge from last week I have, uh, can you raise your voice a little bit from especially from the challenge of last week generating the certificate that i've learned that uh, from uh, <clears throat> coming up with uh, specific uh, prompt is very very essential so that we can get the best out of the model okay. okay what about the week before that this one is for image generation so it could be a little bit difficult because it's generating an image that has uh, weird logos or anything but what about when you are using uh, to generate queries or on the last challenge before this one uh, the, the, the same applied for that week but we were uh, focusing on uh, learning uh, the model to know our okay. database and generate from that so okay. I didn't notice that much, because from the last week's challenge, I noticed that it's very, we need to be so descriptive and precise. Okay. Okay, that's good. Uh, Rudolf, I think you raised your hand. Thank you, Elias. Hi, yes, Fiket. Hi. Hi. Thank you for giving me the floor. Um, for what I have uh, experience from uh, prompt in engineering for the, uh, the the week the week where we we have uh, we deal with the prompt engineering for the first time I didn't really learn uh, much about that so the last week when we were trying to generate an image uh, a certificate is when I have really experienced the power the influence of the prompt engineering so uh, the prompt engineering can uh, impact the the, the outcome of uh, the outcome of the output of the generation that we want. So
So based on the the way we design our prompt, we can have a specific uh, type of uh, generation, and according to that, we need non we need uh, as a developer or engineer to master how uh, to deal with the uh, uh, prompt. So this is what I can say. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Rudolf. Uh, okay. Anyone else? Can you share your experience? Okay, I think you have Tamu. He's saying it's challenge. It was challenging for me. However, I tried to understand the theory of prompt engineering and about LLM, how to use LLM and NLP. That's a good start. I know it's going to be challenging because you're not familiar with uh, how to communicate directly with the GPT or any models, AI models. So it's expected, but uh, from your assignment, from what I saw, uh, you're just giving it a direct zero shot uh, prompting, a direct instruction. Uh, today we are going to see how you can structure it step by step, what content should the prompt have. So uh, today we're just going to focus on the structure, okay? Uh, then let's hear some people's experience. Today we're going to make it, uh, more of a discussion. Uh, at any point, I'm going to share my slide. At any point, you have any question, a doubt, you're going to stop me. We will discuss it. We'll solve it. Then we'll move on. Uh, so uh, I think there's only 28 people until some people join. Let's focus on discussing. Alexander, can you share your experience? Alexander? If you cannot talk, it's better if you can write because just keeping silence doesn't feel good. Uh, okay, let's move on. Basides, 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 Baru. Okay. okay, Alexander, I can understand. But if you can write what challenges you encounter, what experience, what did you learn communicating with OpenAI, uh, the GPT models? Um, Besides, uh, are you writing? Because you're not saying anything. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, because people are not talking, I'm not sure if you can hear me. Or if you could just write, that's better too. So enough people are here. Let's start with the presentation on prompt in introduction and challenge in prompt engineering. Can you see my screen? Okay. 
So I cannot uh, see the message. So you have to unmute and speak if you want to ask any question, or we can read and uh, answer the question as we go. It in the special try. Okay. Uh, yeah, you. Okay. Let's start. Uh, today we have. We're going to look at introduce introduction to prompt engineering. We, it's going to be a highlight because we covered it last time. Then we have the anatomy of prompt, the art of prompt crafting, the prompt template, prompt engineering challenges, and the type of prompt techniques. Uh, introduction to prompt engineering. Prompt engineering is, is just not about being able to write uh, a good prompt. It's an art. You have to know, you have to recognize how the AI model is trained on. First of all, you have to understand what are the type of data, to some extent, what are the type of data, what type of uh, input instruction that the model respond to, uh, comparing to the language language models like GPT-4, GPT-3.5, and daily E, you have to know that the prompting mechanism, the prompting methods to design the to for to design for the two are different because one is for image, one is for text. So uh, you, you first have to understand what's your goal, what are the model you are using. So uh, prompt engineering is the art science of crop, uh, crafting a statement or a question to effectively guide you have to guide the artificial intelligence model to the right response, to the optimal response you need from the model. So you have to be very specific to your desired response. Uh, you have to be careful. Uh, you have to know the model you are interacting with. So it's just, just not about writing something to get response from the LLA model, but also it's an art and a science. You have to, uh, if you see artists, they are so particular about what color to use, what kind of descriptions they want to uh, imply through their art. So you have to carefully design, craft your prompt. That's are the, yeah, that's are the components, main components of prompt engineering. Uh, prompts are the main interface between the AI and the humans. So if you write a descriptive, uh, a structured, what input they expect, what output they expect, uh, you want from the model, if it's explicitly described, I'm not there's going to be a little bit hallucination. No, there's going to be a hallucination. But if you have a mechanism to evaluate the response, you could achieve the desired output from the model. So it's the interface between human and AI. So effectively understanding the AI model itself also help you. Okay. Uh, when designing, uh, I saw the one you did for the Redash chat one and the one for the image generation for certificate generation. Uh, Rudolf, you can speak. Yes, uh, I have a question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for, for having uh, the explanation of plant engineering, which is uh, now a uh, science of. Your mic is uh, disturbing. Can you adjust it or something? I can actually hear your voice. Can, can, you, hear me? can you hear me now? Is yeah. it better? Very much better. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I was uh, I, I, I was uh, asking um, through the explanation, uh, the prompt engineering should be happen and uh, in the development part and also for from the user part because the user also should know how to to request specific question in order to get what he wants from the 
uh, from the uh, AI, uh, in our case, uh, LLMs. So, uh, it, I mean, this is uh, I have understood quickly as a, uh, okay. So I just want to know if, uh, if, it, if it is that, I mean, the user also should be, uh, sh should be taught how to uh, use a, a prompter to get what he wants. And also the, de the developer or the engineer in the background, in the backend also should know how he will design uh, his specific, uh, he will uh, specific uh, how the AI also will, uh, will, will generate an answer to the user. Okay, uh, I think your question is more about how can we make the user when querying the LLM understand how the prompts work then also at the back end the engineer the prompt engineer what to expect from the user right mm -hmm. yeah that's it okay what uh, let's just take nana as ex an example uh, when you ask nana for a question you're just asking her a question you're not worried about the prompt you are the user at the scenario so what you are expecting is uh, she's going to answer you or she's not. But the prompt in general at the back is going to shape how Nana responds to your answer. So you can ask her as any way you want. You don't have to know how to prompt her. But if you are if you are the prompt engineer, like Nana, when she's hallucinating sometimes, you have to put some kind of restriction or you have to let her know what to do after that so it's mainly it's not about the user it should focus on how to ask the chatbot or anything you developed but it's about the prompt engineer crafting a, an effective prompt to to handle scenarios that are coming from the user different scenarios will be coming but how can we handle that that's how you if you dis, if you discuss or if you look at the different scenario and if you put it in your prompt, in your description for it, scenarios to expect as a context, the model, the chat would probably will be less hallucinated than uh, if you didn't. That answer your uh, question, Rudolf. If I didn't answer your question, you can ask me again. I will make it clear. Okay, so uh, it happened only in the backend. It nothing dealing with the user who is uh, is providing a prompt. I'm um, I'm asking the question because you also say prompt when the user requests something to the uh, to the LLM. Mm -hmm. I don't know no, if you. I user, don't. I say user where I meant this. As a user, which means the prompt engineer is requesting directly in the scenario. But when you are providing service to the user, end user, you are uh, you're not directly interacting. When you are uh, chatting with Nana, you're not directly interacting with the modeler. There's some refinement between you and Nana there's a pipeline between you and Nana. Your query pass through the all the knowledge base she has, the external knowledge she can get, then the information will be provided to you as a result. So when I'm saying prompt engineers, prompt engineers directly interact with the models. You got it? They, they shape what I mean is they shape the response from the LLM. You are interacting directly with Nana, but how you interact is guided by the prompt engineer. The description from the prompt engineer. Is that answer your question, Rudolf? Um, it's, it's not really clear, but I think uh, while going on, I can get it clear in my mind. So let's continue. Thank you. Okay. If it's not clear, we will come back to it also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. If the end is not here, I will, I will remind you. Okay. Thank you. Then no problem. Okay, let's move on. Uh, 
and when you are crafting your prompt you have to uh, have this this component within your prompt most of you are just explaining you are just directive you're just giving her generate this image for this 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 but you have to be very discreet you have to have a, disc, a directive that instruct or command the parts of the prompt guide what the AI, the AI, I should do what is she expected to do is she going to evaluate an assignment is she going to respond or assist on some customer service so in the directive you have to have a, a clear instruction what's expected of the model then you, you need to provide a context what are the different contexts you need to uh, you need uh, to provide to the LLA model as uh, an extra knowledge. These are the purpose of my task. This series, this is, this is, are the context. L like the example here, the directive instruction or the command part of the prompt are write a Python function to calculate the factorial of a number. When we give it the context, what are the different parts? which factorial number uh, what about ages uh, in there is an integer negative inputs so you have to know before crafting your prompt which are the different information the LLM need as an extra information to guide it to the better uh, response or better output so when crafting your uh, prompt, your prompt components, you have to have a directive that's telling the, uh, instructing the LLM what to do. Then we are, uh, we need to have a context that part of the uh, explanation or extra information context that's needed for the LLM. Then at the end, what are the, expected output you are expecting is this a, an adjacent format is this a format according to pep8 guideline for every scenario or for every task you are uh, performing you should have this part there's a descriptive uh, the, that tells the model what's what to do what she is then you have a context that tell, these are the inputs these are the extra informations, the scenarios you will encounter. Anything that's need that's needed by the model to reach to the better for the better output result, you will put it in the context. Then you have to insert the expected formats from the response. For every purpose, you have you need the output format. So be specific be as uh, specific as you can uh, then it will lead to a better uh, response uh, the art of prompt crafting uh, creativity and precision uh, what when it's not just simply writing something to instruct when you are using chat gpt how many times do you have to repeat it in order for her in order for the model to get the answer straight. So it's just not just interacting with the model exactly, but having the balance of acting, balance acting of how to be descriptive thing, but also specific. So it's just uh, not just technical, it's required a balance approach. It's about precise enough to get the AI toward a desired output, also being creative enough to explore various aspects of the problem or queries. You have to be, what is the problem? You have to first understand what's your starting objective. What's that the problem? If you are the one who's uh, getting that uh, prompt, uh, if you act as the LLM, what will confuse me? You have to think about it. What are the, uh, what are, 
the problems I will encounter. What if someone asks me out of context questions? You have to think about that scenario. You have to be creative enough to consider that scenario. Also, be uh, creative enough to uh, precise enough not to guide the LLM to be unbiased or hallucinate. So uh, you have to be balanced. Uh, the other thing is that targeted communication. Uh, effective prompts are like target communication. They should speak directly to the AI, understanding and capability, directing toward a specific goal or answer. What we are saying here is you should know what to expect from the LLM. If not completely, but to some extent, what are the inputs you are providing for the LLM? Uh, which part are more specific, which, are, which part will confuse the model. So you have to understand to some extent what the model is expecting, what are confusing the model, what words are, what words are more ambiguous, not clear. So you target the communication should be uh, clear enough to make the model. Uh, answer your response to to give you a desired output. So uh, when the designing your prompt, you have to be creative and precise, but you have to balance uh, balance the art of being uh, precise, then the art of being creative in order to get that uh, optimal prompt. And uh, then uh, an example of this is a uh, customer service chatbot. Uh, if it's an ambiguous prompt, if uh, it's an ambiguous prompt, if I say I need help, the AI response will be generic assistance, uh, possibly asking for more detailed uh, assistance offer because I'm not uh, dis uh, describing what I need. So we have to be specific. In this scenario, we have to be this specific. I need help with billing issue regarding my last transaction. This response from the AI will be tailored assistant focusing on billing inquiries. So if you are going to generate an image for certificate for uh, the last week challenge, you have to be uh, specific to the point of to the point of what color should we, we use? Uh, what background color? Is it going to consume uh, the words I'm going, I'm going to insert into the certificate? Uh, so from every scenario, you have to look at it. Like uh, earlier, Abraham was telling us about how he be, he designed his prompt. Uh, yeah, he used a very good way to get a clear uh, uh, background certificate. What he did was be specific. What he needed was a plain certificate. If you can go further, every part of the certificate could be specified. So uh, as long as you are specific, as long as you are experimenting and identifying what type of uh, design what type of coloring, what type of content you need within your uh, certificate, the AI is going to follow your instruction. But you just have to be clear on what you need. Uh, is it clear until now? If you can give me a thumbs up. Uh, OK. Uh, OK, let's move on. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, after we are crafting a prompt, if we're going to do something repetitively, it's going to be repeated. We have to prepare a prompt template, which means you design a prompt template that will accept some kinds of description and it will perform the specified description the specified uh, purpose 
based on the task given. For let's say for this week purpose, if you are accepting or you are generating data and there's a user query, user interaction from the user, if you are getting a description of the task that's needed and you, you want the user wants to generate <coughs> uh, to generate a prompt based on that if you they need you to fine tune the prompt you have to have a prompt template if it's for law if it's for agriculture it's because you shouldn't be uh, tweaking adjusting every now and then you should have a template for agriculture you should have a template for law you should have a template for technical things so uh, have a comp uh, a vast uh, template that can handle different scenarios. So when creating a prompt template, you should have, these are the guidelines you should follow, define the objective. What's the objective we need to follow? Well, some of it may be for technical purpose, some of it may be for specific area. So you should define what are the purpose the prompt template is being used. Then identify the key points, components. Like we said, the descriptive, the context, and expected format. Different area expect different output. If I want the result of the LLM to be in a JSON, in JSON format, it's been, it may not be the case for a lawyer that needs a descriptive output from the language model. So uh, you have to be a descriptive enough, uh, detailed enough to give them a, to include in your prompt template a context, then the expected format. Then you have to incorporate flexibility. When we say flexibility, if you expect the uh, prompt template to accept an input or uh, a description from the user, you have to have a placeholder. Then you later on fill in the value for that placeholder. So for different topics, for different question of type, for different uh, response formats, you should have a placeholder that's flexible enough so you don't have to go back and tweak your prompt as uh, you go on, or as you go on. So incorporate flexibility, design for clarity. The use of words, uh, the use of sentences, uh, using open-ended uh, uh, questions, it might make the language model more uh, confused. So you have to use simple language. Uh, then when you structure the format, you should make it so that it will be easy to follow. This is, this is R the things you should follow don't ask her to do something don't ask the model to do something then go back in no don't do that you have to be clear uh, structure your uh, prompts in a format that as, is easy to follow if you are first uh, accepting an input from the user then uh, you have to uh, you have to let us follow step by step in a clear format so it's not confusing at the end Okay, is it clear until now? Thumbs up, okay. I think. Uh, okay, so when we come to the prompt engineering challenges, uh, uh, most of us encounter ambiguity in this interpretation. Crafting prompts that's clear and unambiguous is challenging because every is mainly depending on the language, uh, natural language is confusing for the model. What kinds of uh, words you are using? Is it uh, ambiguous? Is it not uh, ambiguous enough? Uh, is it ambiguous or is it confusing? Is it clear for the model to understand? We have to think about it. These are the main challenges we have to, uh, we encounter when doing prompt engineering. Then we have hallucination. Large language model repeatedly produce incorrect information, even when they have learned the correct information. So 
what are the mechanism we have to use in order to combat or in order to overcome this uh, hallucination problems. Uh, then we have overfitting to specific prompts. When we say overfitting to specific prompts, when we become so specific to uh, the, when we design the prompt to be too specific, the module will be so biased, it won't give you the general answer. It will only leave, uh, always be biased to the specific uh, prompting. So uh, that's why you have to balance you have to be creative enough to design a prompt that have specificity, specificity, but also a part that's so descriptive you catch the optimal answer or the right answer from the large language model. So when designing your prompt, you have to be specific to some extent, but uh, at the end, yeah, you also have to like, have to give the prompts, uh, the language model, a room to answer the general questions. So uh, I know it's, uh, that's why it's a challenge. Uh, identifying that core optimal prompt is the challenge because when you're being specific, the model is biased. When you're being general, the, mod the model is hallucinating. So uh, this is the main challenge you are going to encounter when uh, working with language models. Uh, biased in AI responses, uh, some of the data the AI has been trained or has been trained on has some uh, stereotype, gender specific, uh, improper usage of words. So these are the challenges uh, we encounter in prompt engineering, then adapting to different contexts and domains. Like we said, we are using templating for that. If we move on from uh, law to technical, or if we move on to from art to creative writing, uh, they we need to have it. They're going to have a different scenario. So one prompt is not going to carry it. So you have to always design a prompt specific to the scenario. So this is one of the challenges from prompt engineering. Then handling ambiguity, confusion, uh, clarity. This, how do you handle it? This is still a question. There are papers uh, that are introducing mechanisms to deal with handling uh, hallucination uh, as well as ambiguity but it's still a work in progress. So, okay, is there any question until now? If it's clear, give me a thumbs up. Okay. Okay, mm. then we are going to move on to there are so many challenges. What uh, mechanism have been introduced to deal with that? Currently, uh, most of you are using zero sharp prompting, which is just giving the directive to the LLA model. But we have to, uh, that's zero sharp prompting. Uh, then we have a Fisher prompting. We are giving the model. Uh, an example on how to how to respond, what are the expected response should be. If we give it an example, the probability of the model being precise or the outcome being the exactly how we want it will be uh, more more effective than zero sharp prompting. Then, in another level of dealing with the, challenge encountering uh, prompt engineering art. We don't know the reasoning behind the prompt engineer, uh, behind the LLM response, sorry. We don't know the reasoning behind the LLM response. So we have to insert chain of thought prompting, which means we let the model tell us what step has been taken in order to reach that 
result. So when you use the Roshad uh, chain of type prompting, you're just going to ask the model, think step by step. Then uh, if you are going to use a fuchsia chain of thought prompting, you will give it a discrete example with the step you followed. If you are uh, calculating uh, months, you cannot just simply reach the, uh, if I ask you what's 200 times 34, you're just going to need a minute to think. So uh, models need that times two that time to think so the short prompting will give us will give the model a reasonable uh, a reasoning mechanism to think step by step and give us the expected output so uh, using mechanisms like this enable us to deal with uh, incorrect outcomes uh, hallucinations to some extent but you have to when using these mechanisms, you have to be very specific uh, to the task you are using. The uh, prompting might, might be effective for some tasks. The uh, uh, prompting, chain of thought prompting might be effective for another, or if we should be maybe effective for the task you are given. So you have to experiment, know which one works for you. Uh, what's lacking behind the reasoning? Uh, when you use a fuchsia prompting, you give her, uh, in order to calculate 400 with 34, I use this, this, this steps. Step one, I use this one. Step two, then I read this uh, final output. Then you'll ask her to calculate another one. Then she'll f the model will follow the specific step you used uh, it will think of it as uh, an example, then use that to uh, think step by step and calculate the expected outcome. So this kind of mechanism help us when dealing with uh, inaccurate responses, mm, hallucinations, uh, anything that come our way when doing the prompt engineering. Then we have uh, generated knowledge prompting. When we say generated knowledge prompting, we are going to provide, if you ask the model to generate knowledge simply without giving it any context, it's going to give you some improper or irrelevant uh, knowledge. So what we're going to do is give it every time, uh, give it an input, then the knowledge associated with that input. Uh, an input, then the another input, then the knowledge associated with that uh, input. Then after that, okay, uh, okay, uh, Rudolf, you can go on. Okay, in this case, I would like to know what you mean by knowledge. Okay, uh, what I mean with knowledge is the ex extra information you are providing for the model. Knowledge me the known facts. You are uh, asking the. Let's say you have an input. Tell me about Ethiopia or uh, the certain sunshine, whatever. If you are uh, explaining exactly what are uh, the things in Ethiopia, the culture, everything as a knowledge you are providing it as a knowledge. Then you have add another one. Let's say specific to her. If you say her has this, this juggle, anything, this is another knowledge. Then you will ask about a dreader. Then the model has to uh, learn from your pattern, the how you instruct, how you generate the knowledge. Then for, not just uh, generating uh, from uh, the trained data, it has to generate a new knowledge or a new form of information beyond the expected uh, precise way of uh, gaining the, the expected output. 
So, uh, for example, like we said, if you are asked about, uh, we gave an input uh, from uh, Ethiopia, then we gave it the knowledge, uh, we showed the knowledge. Then after that, about Harad, we gave it the knowledge. So it will see how I'm uh, providing deeper knowledge uh, for every input. So uh, the next time another question is asked, it will provide not only the not only the expected short answer, it will provide you the knowledge you need in the format you are using. Is that clear? Okay. Then uh, at the end of the day, you are uh, instructing the model to follow the footstep of your example. So generate knowledge prompting means gaining another new knowledge from the knowledge, uh, the inputs you provided. The language model cannot by itself generate knowledge, but if you give it an example how to provide the knowledge, it will follow your step, then it will provide you with the uh, knowledge, a new generated knowledge. I will attach these papers, they are research papers. So they are uh, papers then, so in order to deal with challenges encountering prompt engineering. So uh, you should look over them, understand the uh, specific, uh, know which one to use in order to deal with your problem or the challenges you encounter. Then we have retrieval augmented, augmented generation. This means that we have an internal data. Uh, then if we want the model only to access that data and uh, retrieve relevant information, we give, we are using RAG, which means we have a knowledge base or any uh, database. Then we have the vector database that's going to give the context. Then it, it may be, uh, then the user query will enter the knowledge base or the database, then relevant documents or relevant uh, chunks of knowledge from the database, data, uh, relevant chunks of documents from the database will be retrieved based on the user query. Then both of them will be passed to the language model. Then uh, from the chunks, uh, the language model is provided, you have to select, the language model will select the proper, uh, the proper chunk or the proper relevant chunk for the user query. So RAG is performing like that. In order, if you have, uh, instead of fine tuning the model, which will be so much expensive because uh, opening eyes has trained on GPUs that's so large, we cannot from uh, just fine tune it. So we, we can use uh, this uh, RAG was researched by Meta in order to avoid fine tuning in. Uh, how can we still make uh, the LLM access our own data? And if you are doing question and answering from your own data, how can we deal with that? But you don't want general knowledge, you just want from your own data. Uh, you just give it a restriction of your own data. So uh, retrieval augmented generation will be used like that. And then we have React prompting. When we say React prompting, uh, when it's come to uh, some point of the prompt, it will have a trigger. It will trigger some action. Let's just say it's maybe function coding. Or oh, let's maybe some web browsing abilities. So in when we are using React uh, prompting, you are enabling the model also to use an extra uh, step 
in achieving the expected output. Uh, is this clear until now? If you can give me a thumbs up. Okay. Then we have reprompting by uh, Google. This mechanism uses uh, a zero shot. It will give the module a zero shot uh, prompting, which means it just will just give the equation to the module. Then from the response from the module, it will use Gibbs method. It's a method of sampling that iterates over the prompting mechanism that iterates based on the response from the link to turn it so that it will get the expected output, which prompt variation works for the given task. At the end, it will produce a chain of uh, a few chain of third prompt for the given input, and based on the first zero shot uh, result. Uh, I'm not sure if this one is clear. Should I repeat it? Someone, can you write or speak up? Because this is important. If you can understand this, until you get to the desired prompt, uh, the prompt that gives you the desired output, you're going to use the model uh, the gives sampling method to iterate. Okay, I'm just going to repeat it. Okay, uh, reprompting is all about you have is uh, you just give the question to the LLM model, then it will most probably output a wrong answer. Then you use the response from the LLM, the wrong answer, then iterate using Gibbs sampling mechanism. Uh, you should more uh, read more about this sampling mechanism in the paper on a reprompting. But the whole idea is iterating until we get a few shot prompting that work for the given the, uh, the given uh, input query. What's uh, we are identifying what is misleading the model to output the response, the incorrect response. Then we are giving it a, a few shot prompting so that it can deal with that. A few shot prompting means an example of these are the uh, these are the example of step by step uh, step by step uh, prompt uh, example you should use to solve the, the to reach the uh, expected uh, result. I think now it's clear, right? Yep, okay. The more uh, you read about it, the more you'll uh, see uh, clearly, it will, be, it will become clear. But reprompting is a major way to deal with prompt engineering challenges. Finally, uh, wouldn't it be feeding its wrong prompt mix. No, we're not feeding the prompt. We are feeding the prompt and the result, the wrong result we got. So until it gets, uh, for evaluation, you have to use the test case. You have a ground truth, which means the correct test case, the correct, uh, like machine learning, you have validation, testing, training. We are using the uh, validation one, you know the answer, we are experimenting. So uh, we have the ground rules, but what's making confuse, what's confusing the model? You get it? What's confusing the model? We have to iteratively look at the prompting uh, using the Gibbs method, then identify which prompt we should we fish out chain of thought prompting works best for our model. I think now it's clear. Okay, I'll share all of this. 
all you see this uh, the bulletins you see here i'm going to make a link so that you can read about it uh, then you can apply to your prompt engineering so uh, don't worry about the the paper just focus on what are the concepts behind the paper okay uh, if you can give me a thumbs up okay so uh, the last one is chain of verification by meta this is the last uh, all of this uh, meta paper research papers are competed uh, against each other then uh, currently uh, chain of verification are uh, outperforming the other ones so uh, it's the current uh, state of the art when uh, dealing with prompt engineering challenges so let's dive more and look at the chain of verification uh, that's one uh, reprompting is it's not uh, just on uh, prompting only it's using uh, gives methods of sampling so the chain of verification is just going to use prompting you just gonna work with the prompt to make it uh, verify the results so let's just uh, okay chain of verification by meta so what uh, first we're going to give it a query name some politician who are born in new york and why new york then the baseline response if you give it if you give the model uh, this simple query it will probably most than average is going to give you a wrong answer because it's going to be confused or where if there are cases when the model will be confused so what did chain of verification did then we add another prompt that will uh, it's, it's, this is a chatbot so we asked it what where is hillary clinton born where is donald trump born uh, michael bulberg born so uh, these are the names the first the output of the first uh, uh, query uh, inquiry so we add a verification a verification then uh, it will the there's another you think of it as a pipeline when it produces a wrong answer it you will add a, a verification phase that will ask based on the response from the previous one what uh, where are uh, where is hillary clinton born where is donald trump born where is michael bloomberg Bloomberg born. So it will it's this was much directive, so it will just give you the description. Based on that, you're gonna have uh, ignoring the baseline response, you're gonna ask the the LLA model, you're gonna give it the final verification answer as an input that will guide the model to be more precise so you just iterating verifying then iterating verifying so it's just a new way of dealing with prompt challenges but it's, it's outperforming the previous ones what's the change it's chain of verifications you ask the llm equation it will respond you verify it input it as a context or uh, an execution verification phase then the final verified response will be outputted uh, that's clear okay uh, okay okay that will be our presentation for today uh, if you have any questions uh, okay okay Lucas you can go ahead 
Hello, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Oh, I can hear. Uh, yes, I can hear you. I'm sorry. Okay, so my question is previously you mentioned that you were uh, looking, uh, going over the prompts that we wrote for the previous tasks. Oh. So my question is what are the common errors that we made so that we can improve this week? What was the most common errors that you observed? so that we can improve it. Okay, uh, the most common mistake I saw was you're just giving it uh, just a command. These are the things, but you're not describing what to expect. Some of you uh, did provide the schema for the model to understand in, in, other cases to, in other cases for generating the image. There is some descriptions, but most of you use just a simple command you do this but it doesn't work like that you have to give a context if you get this kind of question you should provide the answer like this uh, what are the output you expect if you can remember the last time i showed you i need specifically i wrote i need the out the expected output is an sql query have to be very specific not to the extent to confuse the model but to expect for so that the model expects what kinds of uh, scenario to uh, the model will encounter so uh, as much as you can uh, follow today's uh, prompt design the anatomy of prompt think of it as a must have in your I prom design because you're not just going to give it a few shot and expect it to work every time wow. because it's going to get confused it's going to hallucinate this, that's for sure but you can be more descriptive when you're uh, designing a prompt you can make it so that there's if it's need to have an example provide an example. if it need to have a time to think step by step give it a step by step so uh, these are the mistake I saw. Uh, it's, uh, it's common because it's your first time using the model. So with time, uh, this week you'll be more better. And then next week, every time you encounter a generative AI challenge, your prompt engineering will be more uh, clear, and you'll improve with time for sure. Is that clear? Okay, if anyone else, I think we passed the time. So if you need, I don't think anyone is writing or anything. So if uh, I will attach the links for each of the paper, look at it. If it's not clear, write, write for me in Slack. I'll help you as much as I can. Uh, if uh, there's anything confusing, write, we'll uh, look at it to we'll solve it together. So everything is good. I hope you had, we had a nice discussion. Most of you are silent, but it's okay. Uh, so feel free to interact with me on Slack. Uh, have a good day. We can stop the recording. Bye everyone. Have a nice week. Thank <laughs> you.